Hi, today we'll do another uh, Grow Talent interview. It will be Burke from California. Yeah, I'm uh, from Templeton, California, which is like halfway between San Francisco and LA. So it's, but I, I'm pretty unique in the in the temperature range because I live in a very unique place. It has the largest di diurnal shift in anywhere in the world, probably. So um, it'll be 80, 90, I'm in Fahrenheit, um, mind you, it'll be like 90 to five degrees during the day and then 48 degrees at night um, okay. consistently because oh. of through the coast. Because, and then we get desert winds. So we get really hot days and really cold nights consistently throughout the summertime. And uh, that really helps me grow the Nepenthes uh, <laughs> because they all like some of the temperatures that I have to give it. And um, especially my room because just room temperature and Nepenthes love that. Uh, and that's uh, the, the, yeah, that's a perfect temperature for sure. Uh, okay, um, so how long have you got this tent running? Uh, this tent I got started in September, but I got my first couple Nepenthes last summer, like around this time. Mm -hmm. And I had just kept them on my windowsill with a humidifier mm -hmm. going on them. So I just had them going right here just with a humidifier going um, mm -hmm. pointed directly at it, obviously adding a lot of humidifier, humidity, humidity. Um, and then I just have these two grow lights. I got them at this one. I got at Lowe's. It was like $30 and it's been great. It's really powerful. They love it. And then this one I got for like $9 at uh, Home Depot. And nice. they also love those ones as well. I mean, the Cephalotus, I, I mean, look at this, the pitcher jumps on this one. Like mm -hmm. these, these two are the old ones and so their lids are kind of, but this one just opened. So you can kind of see how it's just, and the tendril on the next pitcher is so thick compared to the other ones. And I just think how hairy they are so funny. I really love the cephalotus. And then I got, um, this one had been just this clump for a long time. And then finally, after like six months, I get this pitcher jump and that, that felt really good. Mm, um, so the cephalotis nice. for me, I haven't had any problems with them. I just don't really water them that much, you know. Okay. I just every maybe every week, every two weeks. Same with these plants. I really don't water. They're they're pretty dry a lot of the time, and the penthes kind of like it a little on the drier side sometimes. And mm -hmm. you can kind of see when their pitcher lids wilt a little bit, then then you give them a nice soak. But for me, I just I kind of leave. I, I kind of let them lean on the drier side just because, I, and I don't really want any root rot and. It doesn't seem to harm the plants as much. May I ask you what is the brand of the tent? Uh, this is going to be a Vivasun. It's just a small, like it's like a, it's about, I think, six feet tall, four by four. Okay. Um, and I built this PVC structure that you see here with mm -hmm. the, and um, I built it all. It's not really, it's not glued together or anything um, so that I could lower it as they got bigger and I needed to make more space and change things. Um, That's so I built it. I built this whole PVC thing and I, you know, I thought I built this little uh, alcove uh -huh. thinking that I could stand in it, but I just didn't. So that was something, something I would change, maybe make, just start it here so that I could just stand all in the tent, but I'm using all my space up anyway. So I'm, I'm kind of glad that I didn't. And then right at the middle, this is one of the just amazing, like one of my <laughs> favorites of the whole collection, uh, Edwards Yana by truncata peltata or uh, actually the flip-flop it's peltata truncata x edwards yana ep and i got nice. this in the fall import and it took like, over a month to get here and it came and and it took a while to get going but okay. once it did but now i mean the first picture that it gave to me was this one on this leaf and then and then this one and so it holds its pictures for quite a while it's yeah, had yeah. this picture it's had this picture for several months and it had this little black dot in the back of it. I don't know what happened there, but I mean, it didn't seem to harm the pitcher. No. But um, and then this one, this this brand new just opened. As you can see, it's coloring up. It was a little bit more um, green before. Okay. But Where did you buy it? This was from Red Leaf Exotics. I got it from the uh, Exotica Plants Import. And as you can see, the, I mean, the leaf jump right here from here to here. And then the pitcher, I cannot wait. Uh, it's yeah. going to be huge. And even this one, the tendril. The tendril just is so thick on that, and same with the same with the, the leaf itself, and they're so shiny. And I, nice. I think I I attest that to. I started using uh, fi Alaska fish fertilizer, 
and mm. I started spraying everything, even the roots, like the leaves. I just soaked them with like a pretty diluted Alaska, this stuff that you get at Home Depot for like, you know, 30 bucks for a whole gallon. You don't really need that much of it. Smells terrible, especially you have in your room. <laughs> but, you know, I deal with it. <laughs> at first, but the plants, yeah. they love it. It's, it's a 5-1-1, but um, they, you could just tell the, how lush and green they got the second I started using it. And I mean, as you can see, I'm growing so many different kinds of, I even have an ampullaria growing along with, um, I got, this is a trismatiensis. And oh. It's so slow growing. It's given me two leaves, but I mean, the pictures, it, it's pictured on all of them. And even with this little cut in the leaf, which I, it came with that, which is kind of sad, but it kept going. Okay. What is the temperature inside? Uh, the temperature right now is 77 degrees. And okay. so, um, last night it probably got, it probably got down to like 65 in here. And okay. then the high was probably 83. Um, my room get at the end of part of the day, the sun just beats on this window and this mm -hmm. wall and it just, the whole room, no matter what I can do, it just gets hot in here. So, um, they, but even through the winter time, so they love okay. it. <laughs> yeah. And the humidity is 70% even yeah, more. Yeah. It's probably. at seven. It, yeah. It's, you know, it's at 80, it was at 87, but it was okay. at 69, but you yeah, know, I, sure. I had a humidifier going at one point but i don't i found i don't need a humidifier because the plant the, all the humidity from the plants yeah. i just close the tent and it you know if, if i've watered and the plants have water then um there's humidity and i know i need to water when the humidity is going down and it's in like the 55 range that means that oh my plants are all dry they need water and that's how i avoid root rot because that's something that i've um heard of a lot about and i really try to avoid that uh mm -hmm. And I've found my plants really kind of like the dry periods and you can tell when you know, give them the water and then they, it kind of revigorates the, them and hmm. it's more natural because it doesn't rain all the time. You know, it doesn't rain on a consistent period in the, in the wild. Okay. Um, one plant that I've had a really interesting time growing is this nebularium, this pure species. Okay. Get it a little closer. You can see how that leaf curled when I first got it. Yeah. It, it, but it still grew a picture. It's crazy. It curled and grew a pitcher the other way. I had to cut it off in order to get, but then now it's growing normal and it's pitchering normal. Okay. But it just, it had this really weird, and I, I thought it was too much light. And so I hid it from the light for a while. And then I think that's what it was. It just it was too much light too fast because I have this okay. large light and I only put it, I only have it on like 25% power because um, it burned, it, it will overcook these plants. Uh, I did not know. I was a little bit uh, overzealous with my purchase of my light. But as, as you can see, um, this is one of the first plants I bought, actually, which is the Spatulata Hamada. And I got it from Pearl River Exotics. And as oh. you can see, it is prolific. It has two basils right now. Wow. And this giant leaf jump it has nothing but done nothing but leaf jump and put off amazing pictures for me even when it was on the windowsill and i've never had this is the most vigorous plant that i have for sure and even with, with the two basils i could see it slowed this down a little bit but then it kept but then it got back and is going and it just holds on so, to so many pictures it's had uh, one one of these pictures i mean you can see it kind of it it gets the um the nectar dries on there yeah. and gets turns white <laughs> but i have the fan on this side I only have one little fan going in here with a with a, one of the inline fans that goes okay. through um this box which is full of water and has like a little cheapy amazon humidifier in it and okay. i try to keep it with water i mean and sometimes i'm bad but and it just floats in there and it shoots when it and it goes on a timer it goes on for 10 minutes every hour um okay for most of the day not all day because at nighttime i don't want to it's kind of loud so i just don't have it on at night because it's already cool enough in there because mm -hmm. it cools because i open my window mm -hmm. and, it, and it gets about 50 degrees and okay. you can tell and then even the heat the heelys this one that i, I let, let me see what it is uh you bright purple askins it's a it's a andreas with the stuba plant and it is doing it is nothing but figures as well so many adult pictures it came with like two, three of them and then it's spread across the whole pot and i you know it's just going to be a bundle very soon 
Nice. And this is a vanilla bean vine, actually. I got a super variegated form because I found out that they like the same kind <laughs> of humat, uh, environment as Nepenthes. So I said, why not get one? Because I grow some of my own vanilla mm. and have a nice vine growing okay. at the same time. Yeah. Um, I have a lot of Rob Cantley eye. This is my Rob Cantley eye. Um, let me see. A little close up Rob Cantley eye. I'll just pick up the plant because this other plant's in the way. Rob Cantley Iron Raja in the frame. Nice squat tubby. You can see it's growing a new one, a new little picture right here. And it's got these really discus, and it doesn't like water being on the leaves like a Rob Cantley eye. But I don't know what happened here. This is a little tiny tendril. It doesn't look like it's dead, it's just tiny. Yeah, it happens to me when the plants uh, decided to skip a picture. I have some truncata epiphytica. Yeah. Or epipiata. And uh, now that it's summer and too hot on the windowsill, mm -hmm. it just stopped. So it will come back. I, I think before. that it decided it wanted to skip a picture because I really overfed one oh. of the last older pictures before it died. And I think last minute because it looked like it was going to picture, and then, no, it just stopped. I think it was because I overfed it, and it decided, you know what, I'm just going to grow a bigger leaf and a bigger picture. What and is the... A lot of plants do that. What is the the picture on the left? Can you do us, uh, like, a tour? This is, yes, this Yeah, one. so this is, this is um, Thimbleton. I got this as a Marilliana, and it has a, a question mark. I think it's so funny. But the pictures, and it's growing me a nice new one right there. But let me see if I can find one of the older ones that I got. It's growing two pictures. It's, look at this little squat. Look at how it's shaped. It's this little squat thing. And they just look little thimbles. But it's very vigorous. It just took a second because I had just, re this is a very recent pickup. And then I got this one from a grower on Instagram. And it is this. It's crazy. Wow. That's yeah. It, yeah. <laughs> Lowy I got, and it's and if you see any pictures on, it's think it's uh from Propagate the City, and it is he's so squat. His is so much squatter. Mine is not as squat, but I this this tendril looks like it's growing Ooh. to be a lot squatter, and I'm very excited because he said once it got a little more size, it'd be squat. But it's been super vigorous. I got it on. It grew this picture when I got it. Like. And it's still held on to it months and months and months later. Mm -hmm. Nice. Um, and then this is a Raja Burbigia Edwardsiana. And it, it doesn't have, it hasn't pictured in a while because it had the mealy bugs. You can tell it because oh. it had, look at the leaf, you know. And, uh, but it's now, it's now, I think it's growing me a new picture on this leaf. This, but it, it did do several leaf jumps from the after that because it grew two two old tendrils into the pictures after the mealy bugs. But I really like the stun, sunburst color on it and then the the raja shape and it's really woody as well. So I think this one's going to be a really nice one when it's when it's okay. full grown. How did you cure the the, the pest? Oh, I used uh, neem oil spray. I just sprayed everything in the tent with neem oh. oil spray, um, okay. just because I didn't want to. Um, and then I did that. Uh, once and then waited two weeks and did it again and that was it. I have not had any pests since then and I just can see them going around in uh, in, in the leaves because it's got like that kind of like that trunk caught with it, like the slit in the leaf. Yeah, You could see them living around in there but um, now that they're gone you can see that the plant is thriving. I mean look at this leaf jump nice. right here on this brand new leaf. So I'm excited to see with a pitcher because I mean I haven't had a pitcher since a leaf was this big. So okay. I'm super excited for this one because I, you know, it's going to be a nice big picture jump for me. And then I have a pure species. This is a seed grown Velosa. It's got some leaf burn and I don't know what happened there. I think it was um, just water on the leaf, but it's picturing vigorously. They throw off two pictures at a time. I've seen, I've noticed. So it's throwing off this one and this one, and then it'll grow these two. Same with this one is my other Velosa. This is a, um, this is one I got from Bergen Mar is a Borneo Exotics clone. I wanted to see the, the difference. I, I actually had bids on both of them at the same time, and they won both at the same time, and I couldn't cancel them. 
Um, so I got both for the same price. So, you know, we'll see. We'll see which one I keep. Um, but you can see that it's opening this picture and this picture simultaneously. But they're, you know, they're not fast, but they're not slow. Mm -hmm. they, and I just have them right in front of the fan because it keeps them a little cooler along with the Heelys. Um, and then this is a pure species Raja, which is done something super weird it has grown so many little tiny basils like where look at all those little tiny basils yeah chris growing off of it and i think it just has to do with the clone and i don't know if it's going to stunt the growth or anything but i've just mm -hmm. let it be decided okay. to not really worry about it um and then so that's just this that's pretty much this left tray right here only thing that's left on it that i didn't really talk about you know, we did talk about the uh, just just oh we got this this is a uh, uh, from predatory plants uh -huh. the stoic emperor which is uh, spatulata by edwardsiana i loved my spatulata by himata so much that i thought hey why not get one with edwardsiana because edwardsiana is just such an amazing plant nice and i can just i can attest this this plant is phenomenal i can't wait for it to get big because look at you know it's like this, this picture is very large for how for how small the leaf is mm -hmm. and a very nice wide mouth as well so i think it's going to be a, a quite fine addition and possibly something that could be fairly easy growing as well nice and then i just recently picked this one up actually two days ago actually maybe and as a raja vici loei i really you, do like my you raja. have a lot of raja i do and i actually have some yeah i have more raja i think this is my other this is my raja loei okay and wow. it's super slow growing but okay. i mean I really, it's I, it's going to be a showstopper someday. And Sue, it only it only likes to hold about three leaves at a time. Hopefully, this fort maybe it'll keep more leaves. But it, it's it's been been chugging along. Mm -hmm. And then right back here, we got a BGI. This is Barrio uh, X Pink, and it's put off this huge leaf jump, and it's going to put off this big picture. But nice. I, this one, because it had been giving me a little, like the, the VCI, I've noticed give pictures that don't look, they don't, they aren't functional for a while um, when they're small, a lot of them. And at least this one was, the, the small ones were so deformed and weird. But then once it got some size, and then it got the, you know, the picture of the peristome stopped warping in on itself. And I got something like uh, that green one. Mm hmm. And I was like, man, I should get some more VGI. And so I actually picked up a couple more VGI um, off Red League Exotics from that. I got a, the, the VGI B right here. I think it's going to be a really cool one. Marud Bowen X Candy Dreams. And then another VGI, which is right over here. And it's a K Cross M. Both are from Red Leaf nice. um, Exotics. He he loves he loves his VCI, so I thought I would go for him to get some VCI. Uh, this is another red leaf plant. Well, it's an EP actually, but it's um, let me pull up the tag. I think it's Sibuensis X Maxima X, yeah, Sibuensis X Maxima Epiphidia. And mm. it came like I got this maybe a couple weeks ago, and it came this size, and it was eighty dollars. I mean, I look at this. This is nice. phenomenal. Like I yeah. saw this, this picture poked out at me from the box and I would just, I was awestruck actually. I just did not expect it to be this amazing. And it's just so woody. Okay. And then the opening as it colors up, you know, it was just so green with the nice stripes. It's beautiful. And it, yeah. it reddens up so nicely. Mm -hmm. And the pictures are really woody and the tendrils are long, came, huh. you know, huge leaves. It's just an absolutely massive plant. I mean, I did not expect such a, a massive plant but then also i have another little tubby guy Marilliana subwinensis right here i actually picked this one up for a steal i got it for like 20 dollars on an ebay bid thing that uh ran out of time and i was like I you haven't found, I haven't found another one of those for that cheap and it's pictured prolifically and here's an interesting one that just opened so you can see it'll sh you can see that the show this is a nervous bongzo mm -hmm. And it opens, and it's this cream color, and this cream red color, and then it turns just black. I mean, obviously, okay. this picture is dying off, but it just it it's black anyway, and it's just it's just lovely, lovely. I really enjoy this plant, and um, 
I just really like it's just so it's just kind of a sleeper because I just like the color color changes. When it was younger, the cream color was a lot more intense because it was under lower light. Here is a, another one of my absolute favorites. It is Ventricosis Subonensis Extrus Madiensis Squat XBGI Candy Dreams. And you can definitely see all of those in the newest picture that just opened. Yeah, you see some nice stripes. Wow. Very nice. And I just really like all the speckles on the leaves. Just, you know. And then see how this one, it curled around, but then this one, it stayed flared. So that's interesting. Yes. I really like, I, so I'm, I'm excited to see um, the future of if it stays open or if it furls. And then I got this guy, Singulata Burbigier X Edwardsiana. And I really just, I mean, it, look at the shape on that. Yes. and the pitcher body is just a phenomenal plant and then as it re age it reddens a lot and then they got the ampullaria back here the tri egg x black miracle really huge ampullaria pitcher in it and you can see i need to I need to move it back because it wants to grow into them because they like to it's trying to grow into the wall of the plant so i should probably swap it okay and then right here i have a mapuluensis pure species I, really, I got this one from Foray. I watched the video of where they uh, went on the expedition in search of it, and I was like, wow. And it's just the peristome on this guy. But it only likes to hold about one pitcher at a time. And I over mm -hmm. and I, that I osmocoded it, and it threw it off. So now it's, here's here's its next picture, but picture. So it doesn't really have one right now, but its leaves are – it's given me life, really nice leaf jump since I've been uh, feeding it. It's been a pretty – easy pure species and then i also have a jambon right next to it this picture is just about to open it seems oh, so nice. i'm really excited for that's my first picture from the jambon since i got it um i just it had two old pictures on it and i put off the coat in it and now it's just exploded and in here i have some of the, i have all three of the carnivorous bromeliads the the hectoides uh, and then Reducta and Catopsis Bretonia. I just thought it was cool that there was only three, and they were just so easy to get, so why not? And then right here, I have a Baikal. Oh. So you really grow lowland, island, intermediate? Yes. In the Impressive. same, in the same tent, and they all picture. Hmm. And they're all, ha and they all have been giving leaf jumps, and it's just to show you that plants just want to live and if you give them just the bare minimum and the temper the temperature isn't super important i mean as you can tell all of my plants are pretty happy only plant that i've killed is this one and because i shoved an osmo it was a helium four that i shoved the os osmocote down and it accidentally broke the pitcher and it just has not recovered since so that was on me 100 percent on me and I'm just trying to hope. I'm hoping that it comes back because I saw a little green on the on the thing. Yeah. So I've just been hoping that it comes. I'm thinking it's going to, but you never know. But that's pretty much the tour of of my collection right here. I got some outside. I have some bog plants outside actually as well. What is the the red? Uh, that's leaf a begonia. In the that's a begonia red robin. It's uh, I got it from California Carnivores. It was like fifteen dollars, and I just the the velvet on the leaves was just so cool. Yeah. And I'm not it just couldn't you know for fifteen dollars i was already getting an order i was just like i'll just add it on you know nice. um so all your plants are on the top and the light is one big light on the top yeah yeah so all my light all my plants are just on the top i have other shelves and stuff like i got seedlings going in the little thing and then mm -hmm. and then on the bottom there's a there's a humidifier that is unplugged i just haven't even using because okay. it already is at like Right now, the humidity is dropped because I've had it open, but I'll close it back up because there's mm -hmm. the these I have them in these self watering tra trays okay. with the little with the with the wicking stuff. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't seem to do much about about helping water them, but it definitely it lets me know when the substrates dry because this these dry out when the substrates dry. Okay, and then for them from there, you can tell from the humidity, and then so I water about once every week and a half two weeks not very often honestly 
And then I just fill up the tray, let it all soak in and just leave it. And they seem to be loving it. Nice. Yeah, no, I, I didn't think the buy cow was going to do was was going to be something feasible. But after two leaves of being giving me wonky pictures, it fell right into step and it wasn't like it got any warmer or anything. It just uh, I think it got used to the conditions a little bit. Buy cow I've heard are, aren't or something that can be finicky, but I found a, um, a clone that I heard was less finicky. OK. Any other uh, questions about anything? Uh for the tent i'm good uh you said you had it for a year uh, did you change something for like w when you started the tent yeah so when, you when that? i started the tent it was like i had the the humidifier just kind of like always on not really always on but it was on a timer but that was just too much it was <laughs> the tent was just dripping wet i was like no 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 we can't have this um but other than that it, I, the only thing I had one fan and then I said, eh, I think I want to add another fan to like give it some cold air from the outside. And so that's why I did this invent fan and it vents the air and it vents it to where this fan is. But when it's closed because of, because of how this fan's position, it kind of does like a circle thing. And so you, it dries like when I spray, like I have like one of these uh, mist bottles. I'll just spray it every once in a while because I have yeah. orchid food in here. And they really like the little, the little full, like a light foliar feed of orchid food every once in a while. Mm -hmm. but i don't over the top but the alaska fish fertilizer i do that like once a month because it smells so bad but they, you can definitely tell how great they look even the roots you know a lot of people say don't fertilize the roots of the year nepenthes but i do it on those ones because i heard it from several other gro growers on instagram that have beautiful plants and have huge, way bigger collections than i um and have been doing it for longer that they do that so you know, that's just word of mouth something. And I found that it works really well. And all my plants have been thriving from it. And uh, I mean, especially the, the this plant just takes my breath away every time. It's crazy. I just really like the Edwardsiana and how extremely toothy it is. I got some seeds coming because the Edwardsiana and Macrophylla are just so expensive to get uh, even just small plants of. Like the Velosa for $250 was yeah. crazy. Yeah. I, it hurt my bank account a lot when I won both the bids at the same time, but uh, um, it happens. I wasn't but hopefully when it. they will be bigger, you will be able to oh, sell definitely. one and recoup quite Yeah, no, money. that's that's my, my whole goal is like, you know, get the get seeds going, get some cuttings going and make a couple can't make a couple bucks off of the lots of money that uh, went into the hobby that I just I love though I just I can't get enough of them every single day just going and checking on the uh, on the progress you know how much it's not much changes but a little bit changes and uh, it's nice to see thanks for uh, showing us all this uh, I have a one last question if you were to give advice to a beginner somebody that wants also to have a grow tent what would it be? Um, for me, I would just say get air going. So it's airflow. Uh -huh. um, I would say a structure, a way to how to where to put your plants. I mean, if you want them on the ground, you can have them on the ground. But okay, I'd like yeah, to be yeah. able to stand and look at mine. Um, so figure out the dimensions of how what you want to put in the grow tent. And uh, I think that using the watering trays is the best method because not only do you get humidity from that, you don't have to use the humidifier pretty much. I, I haven't used it in months, really. I was water my plants and it sits at about 85% humidity, 70% humidity. Um, but then the I would recommend the either opening your tent often so that you get ex exchange the air because you don't want it to get stale. That's the biggest thing is you don't want stale air because that'll breed like your your molds and your mm -hmm. uh, and the like the the powdery mildews and such. Um, I found that I haven't really had that problem because I not only just open my tent that much, but I have the, uh, the fan going from that sucks the air through the, um, the humidifier on the ground and that, and the water, even when there's no water in there and it's still just sucking air out. It just helps. Okay. Nice. Uh, clearly, uh, I like the tips for the, uh, humidity tray. Like I really need to do some research and see if I can fit it uh, here on my on my setup. Yeah, but, I mean, uh, I just got these off Amazon. So I got a, mm -hmm. one of them. I got off Greenhouse Megastore, and it was it's this one on the back. And 
it comes in with like a with a it's like an inch like a bigger thicker tray yeah. and it's raised up with the cloth and then the other two i got off like amazon and it came two in a pack for the same price and the, it's just the cloth sits on the bottom it's just a plastic tray with a cloth sitting on the bottom mm-hmm. i've honestly found even though it um the one that where the water sits in the bottom and it just wicks it up in the cloth that doesn't really help water the plants that kind of just honestly will help create root rot personally i like the one where the, the water the the thing just sits in the water and so when you fill it up with water it, all your plants suck up the water and then that little piece of uh that little piece of cloth at the bottom it gives it a little bit of residual and then it gives you more humidity into the air I have a TikTok if you want to see more updates. Mm-hmm. That's I don't really what? post on anything other than it's a it's just my name Burks underscore carnivores. I don't post like super often, but when I remember, I just post little updates of my stuff. So it was thank great you for on. showing us your uh, setup and uh, have a great day. Sweet, thank you so much. No, it was a pleasure to be thank on. Thank you. And, uh, your yeah. videos helped me a lot, so it's really great oh. to the, to show off my collection now. Uh, yeah, the and thank- some little tips that I've learned. So yeah, and so uh, definitely uh, that's useful for beginners too. So that's great. I hope you learned a thing or two from this interview. And if you want to show us how you grow your Nepantes on your Gotent, contact me and I will be more than happy to set an interview with you. Until next time, happy growing.